May, may I request everyone to uh, mute your mics? Manoha, uh, maybe you can kickstart the proceedings. Thank you very much, uh, Murli. Uh, very good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, session of uh, leadership series. And uh, I am privileged to introduce and welcome uh, Mr. P.K. Gulati, who is the current president of Thai Dubai. And he is also the conference chair for this year's uh, Thai Global Summit. Okay. I don't want to take too much time in introducing him, but uh, uh, PK has been a, a technology innovator, angel investor, a mentor, accelerator with a lot of interests in different uh, technology areas. He has been on the board of several prestigious uh, companies. He has been on the board of global uh, trustees of uh, Thai, and currently he is the CEO of Optimistics. He has put together a wonderful global scale Thai Global Summit. I've been uh, uh, part of uh, a meeting where he has actually shown the vision and uh, the uh, kind of activities or the programs that uh, Thai Global Summit is taking up. So, privileged to welcome uh, PK, and I will leave the rest to our good friend, Mr. Morley. All yours, Morley. Thank you very much, uh, PK, for uh, joining us. Manohar, thank you so uh, very much uh, for introducing my good friend. See, if I, if I introduce a friend of mine, um, it, it would uh, come across as a, a friend doing a, a friend a favor. But PK is. Uh, uh, what I call him as a Raja of Jodhpur, right? Um, the, the first time, first time I ever uh, met him uh, was in Bali. Um, so the, the paradise on the earth. So to meet a, a lovely person like uh, it, it was a very um, opportunistic uh, time and the appropriate place for me to uh, meet a person of, uh, I would say a golden heart um, and does uh, what he says and uh, he says what he likes to do, right? So that is PK in a nutshell for uh, all the uh, charter members and the members uh, uh, who are on this call today this evening. PK is called as a, um, a man who seeks exceptional experiences, right? Um, before we get what those experiences are, PK, I want to uh, start um, asking you or tell our audience how you got started, right? What is your background? Where, where, where did you spend your childhood? Uh, where did you go to school? Um, where did you do your undergrad, uh, grad? How did you get started in the professional career? And then we'll get on to it. PK, welcome to Thai Hyderabad's Leadership Series. Murli, first of all, thank you. You know, I cherish this friendship uh, and uh, one of the biggest things that I've got from Thai after being a part of Thai for almost two decades is great friends, friends like you, people and relationships and friendships around the world, you know, which this whole quest has given me. So thank you very much for being a friend and it's my privilege to be a part of this Thai Hyderabad series. You know, life started in a small city in India. Uh, you know, very kind of you to be, you know, calling me the Maharaja of Jodhpur. But there is a Maharaja of Jodhpur existing, so I don't have any, you know, call on that. But I was born in Jodhpur, yes. I, I proudly say that I'm a Jodhpuri at heart. Though uh, I left permanent residence there more than 30 years ago. 
But even today, while nobody is there, I still go there every year. Like I find, you know, my heart still lives there. So started in this small city, which most of the people in India would probably know. And the most fo- famous export of that is polo. You know, if somebody has done horse riding and worn those trousers, the breeches, they're called Jodhpurs for a reason, because they were invented there. And the person who invented it, Sir Pratap, was called Sir because of inventing them. So I was born in that small city called Sun City. I studied there and um, uh, after doing my computer science, uh, ended up in a startup in America, basically, which was, um, you know, I didn't know as much about it, but the two founders actually uh, invented something which changed the world, which is broadband or DSL. And that is what gave broadband to people. So from there, you know, the journey went around, ended up in Dubai because I wanted to be close to India, because I wanted to be close to my family. In the US was too far at that time. So I thought I'll come here for a little while. Came to Dubai probably at the opportune time, and that was a that was what where the the hockey stick of Dubai actually growth started in '95. And something which was supposed to be a year or two ended up being 26 years today. So never went back. Um, in between, ended up starting one of the largest system integration companies here in Dubai and was associated with most of the things which you come here to see. Things like the Burj Al Arab or the Emirates Towers or Dubai Internet City or Burj Khalifa. So we ended up doing all the technology, uh, the smart city stuff as we call it which we used to call smart buildings at that time. So what people don't realize is in 1999, we delivered the smartest building in the world, which even today is one of the smartest and most technologically advanced buildings, Burj Al Arab. So having done some of these projects, it didn't seem any interesting to go back to the US. And then one of the biggest advantages I had was I was next to India. So over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of being in India almost every month and see India close up, which gave me the chance of doing what I did next, which was to build a startup in India. So we were the first people to come to India and start, uh, you know, uh, you know, looking at India as a market and not India as an arbitrage opportunity. Most of the, uh, you know, early Internet 1.0 until about like middle of the first decade of 2000s, most of the business was actually done so that it was cheaper to do that business in India compared to the West. India as a market or Bharat as a market is a relatively recent phenomenon. We are one of the first people who being from the telecom space, we questioned like who was answering the phone calls of all the GSM subscribers coming in. You know, there were no call centers for India. There were only call centers for the US. And we asked the questions of who's answering the call for Indians in India? And there was no answer. So we started thinking on that line to set up the call center. And we started with 16 people in a company called Customer First. By the way, Hyderabad was one of the three cities we started in. Hyderabad, Pune, and Bangalore. And uh, we never looked back. In a period of three, three and a half years, you were 6,000 people like the growth, something which would never have happened in another country. And later we sold it out to a local business group. And two, three years ago, it sold out to private equity as the largest outsourcing company in the world. So I'm proud to say that I saw and worked and built, uh, you know, a company in India. After that, you know, have been actively investing. So in startups, I have a substantial portfolio. Uh, a friend of mine who was ex-Google and myself, we started an uh, uh, early stage fund a few years ago. It's, uh, it's a closed fund between us. And we've gone to fund three, and we've got about 15, 20 investments, some doing exceptionally well and uh, are pretty well known in the uh, technology uh, ecosystem. For example, Goki or Chalo, uh, you know, these are companies in our portfolio. And I proudly say that I've helped you know, being a part of their story from the day they started. So it has been a long journey, but I'm happy to say that, you know, um, you know it's been fulfilling. No, absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to call you Raja Saab only. So the, the PK, um, the, that's how I, I, I called you. And I, I don't think I can 
uh, change that uh, suddenly, right? Even though there is a Maharaja who is, which who I don't know, right? I, 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 I don't know if you remember the funny anecdote, uh, the first time uh, you were wearing those breeches, I, I, I came to you, man, you are a you know, one uh, a stylish dude who can carry on this. And then you, you gave me a lecture on how this um, uh, Jodhpuris were invented and why you are so proud of wearing them. So, great. I, I do have a, a small quiz to the audience. Whoever can think of the company which PK sold to the largest, uh, uh, you know, private equity, if just message me, not answer, uh, just message me. I have a surprise gift for you guys uh, next time along. I'm not going to uh, let the answer out of the cat out of the bag right now. Um, so PK, uh, you, you kind of briefly mentioned about this fund, right? And um, from whatever little uh, I know and what I'm aware of, you have a, a uncanny ability. And this I'm trying to uh, make sure all the members who are on the call understand um, how important uh, for them to get hold of a person like you um, if they ever want to, uh, you know, uh, scale or grow, right? Uh, including yours truly. Um, how do you, I mean, you are absolutely always under the radar. You don't flaunt yourself. You are not that active um, like some of the guys on the social media where uh, you, you, you are there, but you are, you are, you are a silent, um, uh, like that wind which is there, right? You don't make the noise. So how do you, how do you discover uh, these uh, startups, these uh, entrepreneurs who you had such a tremendous success? Murli, uh, on, an, on, a, on a more anecdotal note, today is 14 years since I came on Twitter. In fact, Twitter told me that today. So I am on social media. Uh, I have been uh, reasonably early and have a pretty substantial conversation going on. Uh, no, no, I meant to say that, yes, you are on social media, but you are the, the silent social media guy, unlike the other guys who make noise. That's what I would try to so, say. So, 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 so the funny story is that, in fact, I found my first company to invest here, early startup here on Twitter, very early. This oh. guy was a very early guy. He hmm. pinged me on Twitter when there were very few people in Dubai on Twitter. And I ended up going and meeting this guy who's a young Syrian uh, kid. And he was building a company, early company in web development and basically wanted to build products around it and um, ended up investing in him. And uh, the greatest story about that is the guy actually pivoted, tried a lot of things, was very early in his life, and finally ended up doing a med tech company. He's doing very successfully in Europe at this point of time. So, you know, coming back to how, so I can keep my eyes and ears open. So Twitter, as I said, somebody came on Twitter and I ended up investing in him, you know, to, uh, you know, the own, the, if you're in early stage investing, you know, you have to be on the ground. If you're a fund manager who kind of invests money, you can be later stage and watch who floats over and then go ahead and kind of uh, do a pitch. But I have always found the adrenaline in working with entrepreneurs early in their lives, helping build the product with them and actually being a part of their journey from very early on. So some of the companies uh, I have been a part of from the time when they were ideas like Chalo, which is the largest bus company today, was I, I, I an idea. I want to come to Chalo specifically later on. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll not talk more about it, but yeah. But, but the big, big story is, um, Murali, uh, you have to identify the people early because in early stage investing, the only thing which is tangible when you start is people because everything else is a promise. You know, I famously said this and TechCrunch quoted me, that, you know, uh, you know, whatever you see is in a PowerPoint and I can make the edit in the PowerPoint, I can write anything, you know, the difference between a billion and a trillion is just, it's just a character, if you look at it. <laughs> so, you know, at that point, anybody can pitch anything, oh, the market is this big, we'll get that much, this, that, whatever, all this is fine. And, you know, we all know what the first pitch and the last company looks like, correct? The difference is stark. So all that changes, what you are able to look at tangibly is the people, and the confidence that you have of those people being able to deliver what you think they will deliver. Company will pivot a hundred times before it becomes successful. You know, the product will look nothing like what was pitched to you on day one. 
So what you need to do is to have people who are coachable, have people who are flexible, and have people who learn as they go, pivot quickly, fail quickly, and build fast. So those are the tests which you need to do early. And if you find the right people, success will come. If not now, a few days later. That's what I learned. And as far as searching and finding them, I travel a lot. I spend a lot of time. You know, from Silicon Valley to TED, you'll find me everywhere trying to find these misfits, which I call them people who don't fit a model. Because if you find something, you know, which is a trend, people ask me a lot of times, hey, PK, what are the latest trends? If you're an investor and you're asking this question, you're already too late. Because once it's <laughs> become a trend, you've already lost the bus, correct? You're right. actually, actually a passenger on somebody else's bus. Right. So you have to be early to see the trend. You have to be early on the ground, make the first mistakes, you know, and learn. And that's what I learned in that many years. And I don't do investing for the sake of investing or as a fund manager. I don't see myself as that. I work with the companies. I'm a de facto co, uh, in, you know, co-founder of the company in that sense. You know, one of the biggest things Smart Start Fund, my fund does, is we actually, you know, built a house in Palo Alto so that our companies could go and live there. Because one of the biggest problems was people to actually, you know, they build a company, which is a Delaware company, but they don't become a global company. So our difference was to actually make them global. So that's been a reasonable success for us. Fantastic, uh, PK. Uh, I have a question. You did mention that Goki is part of your... Uh, portfolio and uh, Vishal as many um, uh, members might have heard of him he is a is a fantastic guy right I mean he he built one of the India's largest gaming company but once he had the uh, uh, success um, he also became that entrepreneur uh, who was difficult to uh, um, you know listen or hear from other investors perspectives right because he, as you said, he's a typical misfit and misfits in general don't want uh, uh, to be amiable to the VCs the way the VCs would want and you want to follow your passion, your way, right? How did you uh, see his reasoning and support him in his vision? Today is, is successful, right? Goke is a, a absolutely successful brand. Um, how did you compared to the other VCs, what was the formula which you used to see his vision and support him in his vision? So listen, uh, maybe I have an unfair advantage because I knew Vishal before, like when he was still doing his earlier company. I also have the other advantage of uh, him being, uh, you know, somebody who's a friend before he was possibly somebody I would invest in. Uh, the third thing was, I find Vishal to be an extremely curious person. And that is one aspect I specifically look for. If you're curious, you find new things. If you're curious, you find answers. So he was, he and I used to go to places like Ted and all, like, and, you know, when he was building the company, we've gone and, you know, stood at TechCrunch and launched, you know, the product in the US, done everything together. So I've actually actively, you know, been in the trenches with him. He's exceptionally innovative and he has, uh, you know, built a thing around, you know, this, this, this Goki came out of his, his very specific, you know, interest in quantified, being a quantified self. He used to measure any, everything. He used to measure the amount of water he was drinking. He was measure the amount of steps he was walking. This is pre Goki. And then he put that together as a package and he has actively solicited and got support of some of the biggest corporations and people around him. Like his board is actually superly en enviable. So he's, he's, he's extremely coachable in my opinion. Now, uh, he does have an opinion of how he wants to build his company. And I think it's only fair to have it. Like I would be worried if a founder did not have a clear vision of what he wanted. And if it did not fit somebody's profile or what the VCs wanted, perfectly fine. There are other people in the room. That's Absolutely, no. I, I, I'm with Vishal 100%. But uh, as an entrepreneur, I can see it. But as an investor, uh, uh, it is a different hat investors would wear, uh, VCs would wear, uh, they have ICs to report to. So how do you um, see? I mean, I you, think he's I think doing exceptionally can... well in that space too. 
as far as I understand, he's got some of the biggest uh, funds and VCs with him. And um, I, again, like, listen, uh, you know, when, when, when uh, you know, funders and the founders work together, you know, there's always the founder which needs to have a vision, okay, because there can be only one driver, okay. The, everybody else around him, the ecosystem, the board, the VCs, the fun funders, the, you know, the angels, the advisors, whatever, their job is to actually help him, help the founder reach the mission, okay. Now, this is the reason why you have all these circles of advisors and supporters around him, correct? Now, you cannot have somebody else driving the company through the backseat, okay? So in that case, I possibly feel this is, this, is, this is something which line should be drawn on and clearly defined before you start. No, no, no fantastic, PK. So now you also mentioned that you look for the element of curiosity right yeah and that if there is one element in entrepreneurs so you, how i mean this is something um, you can only discover when you spend a lot of time with the uh, founders right entrepreneurs um, how do you how, how do you allocate that kind of a time um, uh, is there a something else a precursor to the uh, the parameter of curiosity uh, uh, you you judge or you uh, you know question in your quest to find that entrepreneur i think there is no shortcut to getting to know the person okay now that can be accelerated by many methods like so that doesn't take that much time but you need to have a generic good feel about the person and a lot of it actually could be gut feel by the way not definable in the sense of ticking boxes in a questionnaire or something like that you know, uh, one of the biggest things I depend on is peer review. You know, I always do peer review of people. I'll talk to people he's worked with. You know, you can. It's, I've talked to, you know, places he went to, for example, worked or had a job or had done a startup before with other people. Even if the startup failed, how did he behave with people? Do people remember that as a something they would do again, or do they remember uh, do they remember it as a bad experience? And those are the things which tell you a lot about people. So I am very, very cautious about that and I'll be very, very, you know, there's more than one startup and company where I've said no because I did not feel comfortable about that, for example. And uh, some of them are very glaring examples. And, um, you know, uh, I personally feel that goodness of a person is far more important than an exceptional idea. Let's put that. That's the way I would look at it. So goodness, he, he being good to the, the colleagues uh, or the friends, the family with which he is, uh, in, uh, that good or good from a, uh, his knowledge of a product or a service point good? Uh, Murli, the first part is goodness of the person of the human being and that is very important. Knowledge is exceptionally important. Parts of knowledge can always be bought, remember, they can be hired. Yes. Okay. But goodness cannot be hired. Goodness cannot be added. If the, so if the person has the basic tenets and respect, you know, respect, honesty, diligence, these are kind of punctuality, these are kind of, you know, uh, habits and kind of, uh, you know, attributes of a person which make him successful irrespective of where he is. So these are things which, 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 which I value, which I respect. And you would see that some of the most successful entrepreneurs tend to be polite tend to be nice, tend to be good people, they tend to be equitable, so they share the pie, they, they're not the only people who hoard the pie and the rest of the people get nothing. You know, uh, dividing uh, amongst, uh, you know, co-founders. One of the other tests that I do is, I usually look at people who have a good team around them, co-founders and people like that, which tells me those, those people are open to sharing, are open to sharing the position because a lot many times, remember, the people who found the companies may not be the right people because of the skills they have or what is required at that point when the company becomes scaled in the sense bigger company. At that point, you probably need to bring in, uh, say, more professional people or other people to come in. Uh, at that point, it becomes inevitable that the, uh, the co-founders or the founders will have to share the limelight. You know, there was a time when more people knew Eric Schmidt than they knew 
you know, Larry Page and Sergey Brin because he was the CEO. Right. But yeah. there was that part, that part of Google or that part of Google's growing up was essential that put the structure in place and that allowed it to become the large corporation that it is today. So this is something which, you know, do, do, do they have the power or the, the confidence to step aside and let somebody else build their company for them? You know, those are the kind of things which you find very difficult and very rare in India at this point of time, because people haven't gone through that kind of, you know, uh, owning 100% of nothing uh, is not an exceptional idea. You know, holding a substantial part of something may actually be better. Correct. So, uh, uh, so now I have a little bit of an ecosystem question, right? Uh, PK. Mm. You've been involved with uh, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems um, in Dubai, in India, in the Valley, right? And especially uh, Thai, you're part of the Thai Dubai founding team. Uh, Thai Dubai is one of those um, uh, rarer gems in the Thai global uh, fraternity uh, where uh, it has done an exceptional um, uh, job in creating the value uh, uh, in the region in which it is, right? Um, so how, what is the, the, the leadership lesson uh, or lessons which you have imparted uh, to the entrepreneurs in the region uh, and uh, your team in building the Thai Dubai uh, to so that this entire value system permeates, right? So, Muli, let me start with Thai Dubai. So, Thai okay. Dubai started in 2002. You know, we were formally inaugurated in 2003, though. And, um, you know, next year or at the end of TGS, we'll be 20 years old. And um, if you look at that, it's been a, you know, kind of a very, very, very interesting and very, very happy journey for all of us. We have uh, been a robust, you know, and well-performing chapters from the day we started. One of the biggest reasons for that was we had exceptional leaders. And I was not the first leader. I was one of the co-founders, but I took over the president's positions very late, like there were senior people before me. And the greatest thing that we were able to achieve in the Thai chapter was cohesiveness and building it together. Unlike many other, you know, ghetto organizations or niche organizations, these kind of things usually are not found very common. And we've been able to create this whole pathway of success and pathway of continuity. So we, for example, don't repeat uh, terms. We, for example, have these kind of, you know, kind of principles laid out where a position is not a business card, a position is a responsibility. So you actually get a position paper in the sense, if you join this and you become a director or a president or whatever, you actually get what is your commitment, what is required from you, the minimum number of hours, time, what is it that you're going to do and what is it that is required for you? To, are you ready for that commitment? Okay, our secretariat is small, our people are supposed to be executive and work harder. And that has given us some of the most exceptional leaders who have come forward with commitment and delivered. That we've been able to do all these programs and what we're doing, for example, this year, we are the three topmost programs of Thai Global are all in Dubai this year. The Thai Women's Summit final is in Dubai. It's a part of Jitex, the biggest trade show, you know, which has 150,000 people. And I'm sure people in Hyderabad know about it. Jitex used to happen in Hyderabad also at one time, you know, the same show. Then we have the Thai Global Summit in December, which is going to be the largest show of its kind that Thai has ever put. It is a part of the Expo 2020, the World Expo. It's an official show in that 15th and 16th of December. And for the Thai Charter members, their exclusive Thai Charter member retreat is going to start on the 17th in Abu Dhabi. So which is something which we'll announce very, very soon. So you actually have what we call the winter in the United Arab Emirates. So come on over and have a look at it, have a very, very, very detailed dive into the entrepreneurial ecosystem, see some of the most, uh, you know, exclusive speakers and people engage with them and see inputs from different ecosystems from around the world. This is going to be a unique thing. And for a chapter like Dubai to pull all these three things together, it's a very formidable effort, but you should see how the team comes together. Now, when we talk about the ecosystem, one of the biggest impacts that we have on the ecosystem is our mentorship program. Something which we realized that is a pillar of Thai that we talk about, but 
you know, something which I believe gets lost as something like an intangible value in most of our programs. When we talk about Thai women or Thai university or any other programs, oh yeah, yeah, we'll have a mentorship also. In my opinion, mentoring is actually primary in the sense it is more earlier than anything else. It is one of our deepest principles where we build a relationship with people for life. So we run our annual mentorship program for many, many years. Okay, and it's one of the most successful programs that we have. Uh, our past president, uh, Ivan Fernandez, came out of retirement to actually run this program for the last few years. And we have done a very, very commendable program with HSBC for mentoring for the last two years. And this year we have started doing mentoring for the government of Abu Dhabi Hub 71 program. You know, so we actually do a year long mentorship program and is one of the biggest engagements our charter members do as a commitment for life. Now that has the biggest impact and you can see the testimonials and stuff that we've been able to do. And in fact, uh, I plan as a part of the global trusteeship this year to actually extend this as a global program. So all of the chapters can learn and add to themselves and build this as a pillar to work on, you know, because no, we that believe a, that this. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, finish. What I mean is that this is actually the biggest pillar Thai has. You see networking, education, all these things a lot of people are doing, but that kind of commitment, which is benevolent in nature, which is also something where we're not charging anybody, it's free and it's something you give back. All our charter members, all of us, we actually run a mentor the mentor program where we actually mentor the mentors because most of the mentors, people have goodwill, but they don't know what they should or shouldn't do. Like people ask the question, like, I am happy to support this guy, but what is mentoring? What do I do in mentoring? What do I sit and talk to? So we actually run the program and we also put together the do's and don'ts in the sense that what is expected of you and what should you expect? You know, what is it that you are and what is it that you are not? You're not, you're not a consultant. You're not you know, a paid advisor, you're not a lawyer, you're not, you are actually far bigger than that and deeper than that. And also, you're not a domain expert. In fact, a domain expert is actually somebody who should be hands off. So we don't want mentors to actually be running your company. So the idea is to have somebody who actually can guide you support you without being without having any commercial interest in your company, for example. Now, if something else comes later where you give him stock or he buys something into your company or puts money, those are things which are at the end of the relationship, not the beginning of the relationship. So we have looked at that as one of the biggest impact areas for us. You know, when we came into the ecosystem in, in, in the early 2000, the, the word entrepreneurship was alien. Like, you know, there, was, there, were, there were people who were entrepreneurs, but they didn't know they were entrepreneurs to really through. Right. And the, the startup model that the way we know it today did not exist at that time. You know, there was no liquidity. There was no VC standing outside your door, you know, at that time. So today things have obviously changed. We just had a third unicorn, you know, a big SPAC has just happened for a company called Swivel based out of Dubai. We've had Kareem before that. We have Souk before that. So those are homegrown companies grown in front of us, being a part of uh, uh, the Thai ecosystem who have turned into those companies. You know, just to give you an idea, the if you were at Tycon a few years ago, the both the founders of uh, Kareem were speaking on our stage and we introduced them for the first time. And then if you look at um, the Souk, the founder of Souk is a charter member of Thai Dubai, who's now the head of uh, Amazon for the region, because Amazon, right. Amazon acquired Souk. Amazon book, right. Okay. And then Swivel is a company in the portfolio of one of our very, very uh, illustrious charter members called Danny Farha, who runs Beko Capital. So, you know, so, 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 so we've, we've actually been a part of whatever story that you would talk about, you know, and when you come for TGS in uh, December, you'll probably see most of the upcoming ones in the region, all of them being present here. Now, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, uh, December, PK. Uh, I think this is the first time ever, um, uh, let alone a chapter of uh, Dubai size, but any bigger chapters or any chapter for that matter, take three large programs, Thai Women, Thai Retreat, and Thai Global Summit, and, and uh, do it uh, do it at one time, right? Uh, kudos to you, um, to you and your team. I don't want to. So now uh, I have a, a, a change of question going back to the entrepreneurship. 
uh, Mohit and Priya are very good friends of mine. Uh, um, so they, they, they came, uh, stayed with me a uh, few years ago. Um, and that was the first time uh, I heard that a, a good friend of mine and their mentor um, uh, was about to write a uh, about to write a check, right? Um, so that, that's like really. I mean, uh, so uh, now PK has uh, uh, not just discovering the uh, uh, you know entrepreneurs, but is also betting on the uh, charter members who are part of the fraternity, right? PK, I think uh, uh, your screen is frozen. Guys, excuse me, I'll wait for PK to come back. P PK, just let me know once you're back. Okay. Guys, so until uh, uh, by, by the time PK comes back, I had a quiz for uh, uh, all of you. What, what is the PK's company which got sold to the private equity, um, yeah, which the company which he grew to 6,000 people? Uh, any guesses, uh, just message me. Uh, I'll make sure that I Hyderabad uh, uh, sends you a nice guest. Yes, he's here. Is he there? Hi, Murli. Hi, PK. Uh, looks like uh, there are some. I, think, I don't know what happened. I think we lost connection for a second. Correct, correct, correct. So I see that you are connecting through the, the thing. So I was say, telling you that, uh, so that was the first time I said uh, um, a friend of mine is now uh, going towards the mature. Um, uh, exited entrepreneurs and bringing them back into entrepreneurial ecosystem um, uh, in, 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 in some shape or form. Because at that point of time, uh, uh, this particular startup was just an, even an idea. They were not even, uh, I, I would say it is not even a fully baked idea, right? So uh, I want you to tell me um, how did you arm twist Mohit Dubey and Priya Dubey to jump back into entrepreneurial, uh, uh, you know, ocean and uh, become what they have become today. They are one of the largest uh, uh, players in the space in which they are operating. So, Murli, the story goes back again. Uh, I knew uh, Mohit and Priya as friends before. While they were doing Karwale, I saw what he did in Karwale. In fact, um, during the last few, you know, years of Karwale, I became pretty close to Mohit. And we used to actually look at ideas by which we could maximize, you know, how Karwale would, he would exit Karwale and stuff like that. And this idea of, uh, you know, the company was actually something which he was playing with. The company was actually, you know, started by two people he encouraged who used to work for Karwale. And uh, the idea that he has, and like, like Moet is, he's very supportive of uh, other people doing that. And he encouraged these people, but then realized that the board wasn't conducive to the idea of building another company underneath. So he supported the guys and he brought these guys to, I was in Bombay and uh, for, um, I think the TED India summit or something. So we were in Bombay on the dining table. Mohit comes to meet me with this guy and um, starts talking about it. I like it. I said, listen, I'm in, tell me. So he says, um, you know, what should we do? Should we form a company? I said, yeah, form it. So notionally he said, you know, what should we put as a value? I said, whatever you put. So I wrote the first check of a company. I didn't know what it was just supposed to be doing transit. It was supposed to be the city mapper. It was supposed to be the, you know, the TFL kind of an app. They should tell you how to go from one place to the other. And that's what it started as. It started at Zophop. Um, the good thing was I get along with them well. And 
uh, Mohit is a straight talker like I am. So the good thing was uh, we we worked together. And for the first two years, I think Vinayak and the other people kept rebuild the company. And I was actively involved with them. I would go down to New Bombay, hang out with them. And then Mohit was able to kind of um, close and exit from um, uh, Karwale. And after the merger happened and uh, he came on full board. And after that, we haven't looked back. So the good thing is we have invested in every round of, uh, you know, the company far bigger than what we thought as a fund and continue to be this. I proudly sit on the board of, uh, you know, of uh, Cello, Hello. you know, and, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the way we work. That's what I like to work on. I like to work with people who are diligent, like, you know, Mohit and Priya and hopefully build something of that direction. I, I don't know. I just want to remind to Hyderabad members. Um, uh, most of you should remember the My Story session, which happened at uh, uh, IIIT Hyderabad uh, with Mohit and uh, Priya um, in one of the sessions uh, uh, which Thai Hyderabad had hosted. Uh, um, uh, instantly, uh, I kind of interviewed both of them at the time. The, the, these two are exceptionally, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, quite a remarkable personalities. Right, as an individual, right, both Mohit and Priya. And Priya has this so much energy. Mohit has this uh, somber, but you know, laser focus, laser sharp, uh, um, you know, uh, go get uh, done attitude, right? So, is these the uh, uh, symptoms or is this the parameters which you look for among even the friends or the first time entrepreneurs when you were trying to write a check? Is that what you would want? I think the first thing which you already know about Mohit, um, you know, is that he's very, very, uh, very, very straight, very diligent and with a proven track record. So what else could you ask for? Though I can assure you that the, when we wrote the check for the company and when we talked about Zopop at that time, this was the name of Chalo originally. Right, right. I, I you know, Mohit, there was no commitment of Mohit coming in, by the way. Hmm. There was, it was there was no commitment that he would leave Carvale and come and join. Carvale was a far bigger company, and of course he brought a vision which is larger than what it was. But it was something that we were doing together. It was almost like, hey, I'm building this vicariously. And to tell you the truth, for the first few years, Moit was investing into the company, right. and he personally invested a substantial amount of money in the company. He was, of course, the mentor and guide, but there was no such commitment that I think over time they started realizing that this was something they could do and this was something they could build. And they had an exceptional relationship with the founding team, especially Vinayak, who was the CEO of the company, who was the CEO originally, you know, for them to seamlessly come in and be able to kind of fit this in. And I am actually exceptionally pleased to say they have one of the most seamless and most, um, I would say, cohesive, uh, you know, kind of uh, organization that I know of. You know, you know, it's been hard work. COVID has been difficult for everybody, especially in the logistics industry. And I say proudly that they have actually proven everybody wrong. No, I, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, extremely happy to um, keep following their progress. Um, so, BK, just moving on to uh, uh, a, a little uh, frivolous banter. Um, I, 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 I hear a rumor. I don't know how far you have to, because it's a rumor for me that um, you have a speed dial on um, uh, 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 of one of the unicorn founders soon to be um, IPOing, uh, who is in the fintech space. Uh, uh, is that a, a, a true rumor? And uh, what, what is the reality to the rumor? Well, well, well I think uh, morally, you know, when you say the word speed dial, you know, already dates us, correct? There's nothing called speed dial, correct? So I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, yeah. it's obviously a rumor. It's obviously a rumor. It is obviously I have a rumor. I, I have a lot of friends. And if they're friends, they're always on speed dial, man, in that sense. No, no, I'm, uh, for, for all my members, it is a bragging right uh, uh, for me as a friend of PK. Um, I, I was told that uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma of Paytm um, he, he, whether he answers others' phones or not, uh, he picks up PK's phone uh, 
in couple of rings so that is the Only you are uh, starting you are starting undue rumors vijay is a friend <laughs> and actually i have known i have known vijay for more than a decade and he's been exceptionally kind you know i i i do my own bragging rights when i tell people i was there when they when they started paytm so in the sense from where 197 like from uh, being a content company moved on to being a fintech company so i was there at the town hall when this was actually and we had this discussion on wallets and i didn't even know where i was going so he's been an exceptional person an exceptional friend yes um, you know i do count him as a friend and he still is somebody you know who is um, you know by the way uh, vijay is somebody who is exceptionally passionate about thoughts ideas and missions uh, he's been close to tie he actively Hi. supports tie in multiple places he has spoken at icons in dubai and Hi. obviously in delhi and all so he's he's been somebody who's been exceptionally supportive and similarly other entrepreneurs who've been key be dipinder from zomato be it, like all these people have been exceptionally supportive of our cause you you, you, know, you stole my you uh, stole my thunder with the dipinder uh, i was going to come to that next uh, um uh, no the pk I'm, the reason i want uh, i'm just trying to throw these names is not because of i'm dropping the names i'm trying to brag that you are, I, i'm one step away from knowing these people right i want my fellow uh tai hyderabad members to know how important the tai network is how important the tai leaders the kind of uh, uh, phenomenal work which they have done over the decade without any expectation like any other uh, any other organization right so there are you, you kind of touched upon it one of the reason why i give so much um, uh, sweat blood and tears to tai is because two things one it has given me the best friends friendships around the globe and second thing the ability to give back to the society without expecting anything in return right pay it forward in its truest sense right and i um, i think there are almost about uh, you know 30 entrepreneurs on the call today um, who are uh, wanting to scale their corporations scale their organization go to the next level and i just want to see how they can tap into this vast network of tie right i mean there are um, pks of the world uh, who are you know lending their hand out uh, um, it's just that they need to seek that hand and the hand is already there to help them out right um, so uh, it is just that uh, in in that sense i am trying to throw this name so so But when on that serious me, note uh, sorry Yeah. Because sir, on that serious note, I do want uh, you to tell about your journey with uh, uh, Dipinder uh, when he was. I mean, I know there was lots of a, a, a sign karu kind of a path for him, right? Uh, with Zomato. So if you can uh, share some of those experiences, um, it would be fantastic for the entrepreneurs. So, so mostly, you know, uh, personally, I have absolutely no contribution in the success of uh, Dipinder. Dipinder has been. an exceptionally driven and exceptionally uh, at a focused person and has built zomato despite like from foodie bay to zomato public today it's been an exceptional journey and i can only say that at parts of the journey i've had the pleasure of having a ringside view you know uh, you know he's been he's been very kind uh, to me uh, i came in touch with him because of sanjeev bichandani because sanjeev right. was the earliest founder uh, supporter of his company when it was still called foodie bay i still remember him telling me how he came in touch with foodie bay because his son was actually accessing it and he went there and he liked it and then made a cold call and i don't know two days ago he actually tweeted the first email that he sent to the vendor you know asking him like why well, let's like foodie bay can we have a call kind of thing so from that time onwards and um, then of course uh, zomato first port of call internationally was dubai they started their international expansion or the global expansion through dubai and dubai did exceptionally well for them they actually ended up uh, selling part of the dubai operations to uh, delivery hero and in return ended up buying the you know the uh, uber eats in india uh, and so so he's been exceptionally great at deal making and coming up with uh, with uh, with the uh, ideas which are able to for example 
you know, make the value for the company. So I have known him closely for that. I've also been, uh, you know, seeing him closely. We spent some time brainstorming and stuff like that, which I hope has helped him. And he's a great guy who stays in touch and has come to Dubai, spoken for us. And I believe, um, you know, has still a long way to go. He's just taken his company public. And I think you still have to see many chapters of his success yet. So yep. in that sense, um, I've been privileged to have an inside view. Yeah, fantastic, uh, uh, PK. Uh, at this note, um, I've just, um, I forgot to look at the clock. I mean, the conversation just kept on going, right? Um, uh, um, I did promise my audience to give an opportunity to ask three, four questions. I see that uh, Srinivas Anamendra has raised his uh, uh, hand to ask the first question. So Srinivas, can you unmute yourself and ask the question? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would like to know the present scenario of uh, the fundraising and uh, this, uh, how this funding is happening. So, PK, in, in, I, I, in, in what in what sense I, I did not get the full scope of the question. Yeah. So, in, in the space of angel to venture capital, uh, there's a lot of funding is going on. It's a seed level, series level. And uh, some of the companies become unicorn. So, what is the secret behind it? Uh, I think the secret behind it is execution. You get money for execution, not for ideas. So when you are at angel level, you need to have the capability to tell a good story of your idea so that you get the money to actually create an executable uh, you know, company. And once you get to that level, you can also then start getting the next level of funders to come in, which are probably the VCs, and then build your company. So what you need to do is be able to pick up an idea and make that into a product that people want to buy. That is what a founder's job is. Funding yeah. follows. It's like people betting on you, correct? So if they feel that you can deliver, they will bet on you. So what you need to do is to actually make sure that you're able to kind of deliver what you're promising to deliver. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you PK. Uh, anyone else? I think we told them everything, Murli. Yeah, looks like it. I mean, I'm 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 quite surprised uh, um, that that uh, uh, none of them have uh, questions. Yeah, uh, Lavinia, please go ahead. Sorry, we were actually muted, so I didn't yeah, no worries, know please. about it. Yeah, yeah. Hi, PK. Uh, good to hear from Hi. you. Uh, you experienced guys from you, like you. Uh, my question was, like, I see a lot of women entrepreneurs struggling to uh, get a foothold in the tech uh, uh, businesses. Is it a tech boys uh, uh, thing that you guys are playing since you said it's more like a game that you don't let, <laughs> you know, other players get in? Or is it that women are not able to come up with good enough tech, uh, you know, products? I find that a little challenging because... It's not just about survival, like you rightly said, it's not about the idea, it's about the execution. So is it the same field for women entrepreneurs or is it a different one that we should work on? Uh, PK, before I let you answer, <laughs> I one, one, one comment. Um, Lavanya, I'm deeply hurted and uh, Rashida, my friend, is on the call, I saw her. I think she will also be offended because for the last three years, Thai Hyderabad has been doing it. <laughs> phenomenal job in creating the level playing field for women entrepreneurs, at least in Hyderabad. Now, uh, PK, I'll let you answer. Sorry. So, 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 Lavanya, I agree with you. It's not a fair world. But then, remember, all we can do is to repair it, correct? So, we are all trying. The Thai women's program, for example, is exceptionally, like, you know, uh, you know focused on something like this. Now, uh, you know, I don't see women as you know, coming short in anything in the sense of tech or uh, leadership qualities or being able to build the best company. You know, look around you. You have enough examples of women leaders uh, who have been able to create uh, exceptional companies. Like, like I don't need to even name them. You know them all from Kiran Majumdar Shaw to, you know, VCs Vani Kola. Look at all these people, you know, people who 
probably some of you may actually have known in their earlier uh, reincarnations who built companies. Look at the new companies, Nike. Like you know, look at look at look at you know uh, people who've gone against all odds and created these companies. You know, you know Aditi from Imbibe. You know, that sold a, sold a company to Reliance. You know, so there are tons and tons and tons of examples like this, but they're still short. There should be more, I believe, and I agree with you. And that is the reason why, it, it, especially in Thai, we have actually put together the Thai Women's Program, which specially focuses on women-founded, women-led startups globally. We do that in multiple countries. This year, it will be 45, 45 the cities that we would run that competition in. But those kind of supports are there. Uh, there has to be a more mentoring network. I saw my friend Vani Kula put together CXXO Network recently to actually support funding and mentoring of women entrepreneurs. So there are a lot of initiatives, but as I said, they need to be more, and I am committed to it, and so is Ty. Thank P you. On that note, I do want to uh, remind our viewers that Vani Kola's first check was written by our Thai first president, Suhas Patil, uh, to, um, this is like several decades ago, right, uh, uh, Lavinia? Yeah. So we yes. do- she, 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 she was, she was, she, when she was a founder, she did two companies in the U.S. before she moved to India to form what was called Indus Ventures and then later Kalari Capital. So um, to be fair to everyone, I am going to ask Sailaja. So to show that we, we do keep women um, upfront at Chai, right? Sailaja, you can ask. Thank you, Murali. And uh, hi, PK. Uh, thank you for um, sharing the insights. Uh, and encouraging the women entrepreneurs. Um, I, at the, and, uh, in Thai group, like Global uh, Pitch Fest, what we have, it is for, um, I think, uh, who, uh, the uh, ventures who are already into revenue generation. So under Thai, is there any um, uh, program where uh, we can, uh, I mean, early stage, like, you know, idea stage, where we can pitch and uh, uh, get some funding um you know uh, to build the product uh, i know you so said about usually... oh. sorry go ahead uh, i i think you you spoke about smart start fund um uh, under thai uh, can we apply or directly how do we apply for that i'm a i'm a early stage where we are just building a prototype i just have an idea conceptualizing it and building a prototype uh, looking for fund actually so under Thai global pitch I thought we can pitch but it seems it needs a revenue generation so Shelja usually angel or very early stage when you're more on idea stage investing usually comes locally what happens usually is and I think uh, local ecosystem supports that level of uh, investment where you are able to come up with an MVP kind of a product and then usually you'll see formal money in the form of funds and VCs come in. So my suggestion would be, and I'm sure Murli and the team can guide you, there's a lot of support on the local level, you know, like incubators, accelerators. I would suggest try to look at one of those to work with because they tend to give you far more, uh, you know, direction and support to actually package your uh, product and to bring it to a form which will be investable by next level of investment. Okay, thank you, PK. And I just want to have, I have another question. Uh, uh, what is your view on um, uh, health tech uh, industry uh, where medical, rec we work on medical records with a special focus on uh, uh, one specialization? Uh, how do you read that opportunity? Like, does it have scope? Because I see a lot of medical records are not really encouraged by uh, doctors, but I learned that what they are looking forward uh, to adopt that. Okay, I think we lost uh, PK. Yeah, so, 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 so I think uh, uh, PK is back. He's listening to you. Okay, can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, oh, finish so, I think we heard your medical records. So with one particular, uh, yeah. so medi right. Medical fraternity, whatever I have explored, uh, they have given some challenges about the med ad in adopting medical records. So, so I learned what is required for them. Uh, so I'm working out on that to make it easy for them to adopt, to get an adoption on it. So what? how do you read that uh, field? Like, uh, does it have scope or uh, is it, are we still not there in India? 
can I so know your Kenja, my, can I ask you a question like when you say medical records is it the services business or is it the product that you're trying to build it's a product uh, intelligent uh, medical record product where it just it doesn't uh, uh, record the medical clinical information it also adds intelligence uh, to provide the clin in clinical decision support system well uh, i personally believe this is actually pretty hot subject in terms of use of ai so i'm sure you'd be able to find some accelerators would be very interested in helping you build this thing okay uh, how is the market for it like uh, uh, is it something which we should take it now uh, so uh, uh, my suggestion my suggestion would be, would be to actually put them with our you know one of the medtech tech people or people who are in the medtech space to help them give a specific idea i would not be the best person to answer this question in terms of what the market space is like yeah uh, sailja i am requesting on this uh, through this forum uh, to uh, to get in touch with you and uh, uh, connect you with one of the uh, mentors um who will help you scoping out the market and all that stuff and try to do it and i think as pk said it i think it is a quite hot area and uh, with the artificial intelligence coming into the medical record space i think you can create um a substantial startup on that um now friends uh, with that note uh, sorry if others were uh, trying to ask questions uh, uh, we'll try to get uh, uh pk back before uh, the big tech global summit once again um but uh, i do um hope most of you would plan to plan your trip in december to dubai um i am certainly and uh, uh, along with me uh, mo- many of our charter members are planning to be in dubai in december for about a week to um, experience the hospitality uh, and the the knowledge uh, which uh, knowledge show which pk is putting together right uh pk uh, i i think i have very few people who have the liberty to call uh, uh you know few hours after they landed in the country to say buddy come online uh, there is a leadership series and you are one of them um uh, uh, guys uh, he he was in us for last uh, uh, two on two on a weeks and uh, i just caught him off guard and uh, um, had to um, he's quite jet lagged still he made his time uh, to be on this call to share his knowledge and wisdom with uh, all of us today this evening pk for that um next time i see you drink is on me um hey thank you so much uh, it's a privilege and a pleasure being uh, you know on this program with you especially murli and to be able to speak to your charter members and members and to be able to answer anything i'm happy to stay in touch feel free to ping me twitter or anything as i said you know i always tell people i'll take the first meeting the second depends on you so <laughs> you know happy to happy to be in touch with everybody thank you so much thank you uh, uh, jodhpur ka raja again uh, this is murli and pk signing off from tai hyderabad studios you all have a wonderful evening take care bye bye thank you take care thank guys you. thank you thank you bye. sir